The first name in luxury is pretty much always this vehicle, the Super Diamond. And um, the name pretty much says it all, really. It's made by Enos, and it's, well, the hallmark of the luxury car. If you ask what is a luxury car, you will find this car. It's not too expensive, actually, but for being in the original game, it is very expensive. In fact, it's $200,000. But you do get a lot. You get lots of leg room, very comfortable leather seats, um, climate control leather seats. It's very nice in here. And now you get to the driver's seat, which is even more luxurious. <laughs> now, I will say, the engine is a bit dull. It sounds nice, but there's not really much to it. I'm not sure that's because of the weight of the car. The acceleration isn't very good. Because it does weigh almost 5,000 pounds. But that's not really what it's designed for. It's designed to make you feel like a king. And look good while doing it. And uh, you're certainly comfortable. Admittedly, you don't exactly fit in in this area. You might get graffitied or scratched up if you drove it around here because they might think you're um, a bit ostentatious bragger so yeah and it is a bit tricky fitting in the parking space because it is very large I'm my bumper is pretty much on the parking block here and it just about fits in the space but it does if, if it was a parking lot you might get your back end nicked but Honestly, you would have your butler drive around, wouldn't you? So, you would never need a parking lot. Now, this wasn't the only car for luxury manufacturers, because back in the 1950s, Enos made this. The Stafford. It's very expensive. It's way more expensive due to the rarity of it. It's $900,000. It's the quintessential Bond car, 50, the evil villain vehicle. That's what it looks like. And, well, it's basically the Super Diamond, but 60 years old. And by that, I mean it's very comfortable, very luxurious on the inside, but it is a bit big. That's the first problem. Uh, you don't want to drive in these narrow streets because it's very big, very expensive, and it's real tight fit. <laughs> That's the, um, ah, it does make you terrified for your butler to drive it. Because <laughs> it's just so narrow. You have maybe a bumper's width between these walls and everything. But, it is undeniably gorgeous. I mean, original, nice wood, nice leather, good stitching, ride is soft, and frankly, it's brilliant. For being less than a million dollars, I think it's a fantastic machine. Now, Grant, you do have wind-up windows, which is a bit annoying. But overall, what the, fuck, dude? the looks, the cheapness of relative speaking, and who cares about the performance? It's not fast, it's supposed to be fast. But, what if you want it to go fast? Like, say, do something these cars were never intended to do. Um, I can't think of it right now, but maybe... There's a racing event going on in the south of Los Santos, which I think we should take part in. And this racing event is autocross. The most technical, challenging racing in the world. Where you have to weave through narrow gates with tightening radiuses. But yet, it's also the most accessible. You only have to pay a very small entrance fee in any vehicle you want can be taken around the course for a time to lap. Which is, which means I could theoretically take these cars around, which is what I'm doing. It's gonna be your challenge three best of three. 
so I am concerned about the uh, size of the vehicle. I will be honest. Make some noise and let's go. Bit of wheel spin is rear wheel drive after all with over 500 horsepower. Heading up to the crest. Woo. Oh dear. Turn it. Turn it. Whoa, that's really tight. That's a really tight turn. That's not. That's a hairpin. Come on. We have another hairpin coming up. Uh, oh. Break some as good as I thought they were. Not, um, slow and steady. Oh, that's very close. There we go. Diff is not particularly good in this. I hear it and feel it spitting the players every corner. <laughs> oh, that was close. One more. One more gate. Uh, there we go. I hit the one last gate. You didn't see that. Nothing happened. We're good. Just gonna, just gonna cross the line here. So. After getting it fixed in a little bit, I was back on the circuit, and I was doing a bit better. Oh, air time! Air time! Now use the handbrake, that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use the handbrake, give us a little bit more turning radius, because that's our main problem here, so chuck it in. Yes, sliding the back end down in the Super Diamond. That is definitely what this vehicle is designed for. You really gotta saw at the wheel, though. It is very demanding. Come on, uh, spit better. Come on, and there we go. Better run. We got one more attempt to make this real good. All right, ready? Mentally prepared, here we go. All right, we have to speed, come to speed. Be careful on the jump. We didn't have a jump this time. Big sideways moment, didn't mean for that to happen. But it's not gonna affect our time too much in this technical zone. All right. Now, lot late apex, we're there we go, nicely done. Perfect through there. Now turn it around, turn it around, ooh. Remember to use that handbrake, I'm using the handbrake more than the actual brake. Oh, hey, there we go, that's much better. Much more, much smoother, I think. Oh, that's a workout. And I'm only expecting the workout to get even worse with this. Because it's from the 50s and has no power steering. And the handbrake's off. But we're going to give it a go. It is a bit heavier. It's almost 6,000 pounds. But we still get air time. I'm amazed the suspension doesn't blow out from that. Ugh, don't crash this. You don't have a replacement part for this one. <laughs> that would be... The owner would be very angry at me if he knew that I was doing this. Almost hit the poles again. We're good. It is genuinely boat-like here. Because you have a hood five miles long and it's just wibbly wobbling all over the place. Took a little bit too shallow line there across the line. Alright, second round. Let's see how the staffer does. Okay. Nice calm. Are we good? Everything's gonna be fine. Rev it up. I mean, that's this high of a red line. Here we go. Alright, good launch. No wheel spin this time. Come on, 20, 30. It's not very fast, this thing. And the acceleration is very slow on this back straight. But, ugh, okay, I screwed that up. I screwed that up big time. I had to be real slow through there. That's gonna hurt our time a lot. Hairpin was nice, though. That hairpin was very nice. It's just. Nice and boat-like through here, and we see have some good turning, truth be told. Oh, oh, and a little bit more, and you see the rocking. There we go. Final run. That second run was awful. Let's see if we can make this one count. Ready? Yeah, ready. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for the clock to start. And we're away. All right, nicely done. Come on, 30, 40, it's not very really fast around here. Ooh, air time, proper air time. Now, there we go, turn it nicely. You're gonna go too slow, so you're gonna carry some decent speed. First, the size of the vehicle, hairpin, there we go. Minimal uses the handbrake so we can maintain speed. Yes. We actually have to use the brakes on this one. Just one more slalom to go. And we are across the line. That was good. That was real good. Whew. Now I could go on and say what the times were and if this one was faster or slower. 
that's not the point of these cars. These cars aren't designed to be fast. They're designed to show up at a party and say, I'm the most important person in the room. And truth be told, what's wrong with that?